NBC floor tuning workshop. On the floor here, you've got Chameleon version 8, SRAM Eagle XX1 system, Holt brakes, Holt wheels, Vertex stem, grips, etc. So, I'm going to build a front wheel now. So, it's a Holt 110 Pro 4. Okay, so you always start with the drive side on the right and the, the drive side spoke over here, which is a 292, 16 spokes. So 290 is a non-drive side or disc brake side. Okay, so this is my spoke powder, which helps stop the spoke snagging when you're doing it up. Okay, spinner, tensioner, spoke checker, and these are the nipples that I'm going to be using, which are four square. So you drive them in from the back rather than on the, the flats here. Okay, so there's a wheel I built last night. I'm gonna duplicate that now. Bring you back in a minute. This is a trimming stand I'm gonna use. This is a part tool professional. Okay, so now we've finished the first stage, which is to put all the sports on the inside on the free cross pattern making sure that the valve hole lines up, not crossed, and lines up with the writing, as you can see it does. Yeah, valve hole there, lines up with the writing on the hub. That's quite critical, that. It's something that not everyone looks for, but I do. Okay, so now we're gonna put the spokes now on the opposite side, on the outside, and lace it up that way. Once that's done, then we can put it on a jig and start the trimming process. I'll bring you back in a minute when I start doing the trimming. Right, so we've now spoke the wheel up completely now, because you can see it's all over the place. Right, so I'll set it up in the attachment for this wheel trimming stand with a 15 axial taper cones to keep it true. So as you can see now, all the spokes now have got thread showing. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna take every spoke now so the thread can't see any thread. Once I've got that, then I'll take each spoke in turn in, one complete turn, and then we'll start trimming it up. You need to start by equally getting all the nipples on to the end of the thread, just there. So I'll bring it back in a minute when I've done that. So as I spoke about, so all I've done now is I've done all the nipples up so I've seen no thread and then tightened each one of them one complete turn. So as you can see now, it's running true now without even truing it. But this is down really to making sure that you've got the right sport lens to start with, drive side and non-drive side. Working out your EID, effective wind diameters, nipple diameter, length, effective range of all that. And then making sure you do them all up equally. So I'll bring you back in a minute when I, get it, when I start to get the sports tensioned properly. And I'll explain to you then about concentric and side to side trimming. Okay, so all the sports have partially tensioned now. What we're going to look at now is how to adjust the make it concentric. So I've got the gauge so I can see a gap. And I'll wind that round now until I hear it catch. So when it catches there, so what you would now do is tighten the, the spokes in pairs, one on each side, to pull this section of the rim back. The wheels are built now. So what I'm doing now is just fitting the floating rotors in blue. So I've discarded the bulk kit that comes with it because on this bike we're going we're going titanium for everything. I want it to be as light as it can possibly be for a 29er. We've now uh, got the frame out. I've set up the rear triangle because it's got these dropouts down. So I've measured them, torqued them up to uh, 50 newton meters. Put the rear axle threaded, left hand threading, which holds the rear rear mag. So we've fitted the XX1 uh, axis. Biggest job today really has been setting up the, uh, the dub rear axle because I've gone for a hulk as you can see here hulk conversion it doesn't come with the spacers that you would normally get with the uh, with the dub button bracket but I'm quite happy with it to be fair so I've measured the chain line which I've now set with a spacer down the bottom down there and I've fitted the hope chain keeper and spaced that off accordingly Fitted the trail union pedals, which are lovely. I had to get the laptop out for some technical information. I'll bring you back in a minute. 
Okay, so it's uh, Fox Float Factory time. It's got the forks there. This is the uh, inch and a half bottom hole. That's the top. These are the, these are the shims to set the uh, the correct distance from the top cup, so it rubs on the top of the frame. Vertec stem, and we're going to go for a trial fit to work out the length for a chop. So we've test fitted the fork without grease. So I've got bottom head setting top headset, the spaces I'm going to use, plus the stem, and this is the amount. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure that now exactly with a vernier caliper. And it is, as you can see, if I take 35 millimeters off there, that'll be one millimeter before the top of the uh, stem. Yeah, we've cut the uh, the fork down by 35 mil using my part tool oversize uh, saw guide. Okay, so now we're going to look at how we're going to fit the fork. So the forks come standard with a star nut. This is Stone Age technology, as far as I'm concerned. What we're going to use instead is a whole head doctor, which is an expanding collet, which fits inside the other uh, stone. Much better way of doing it. So there's a bit I cut off. There's a whole head doctor fitted. I always fit it about 15 millimeters just inside, just down. Okay, forks are fitted. Got the K-Edge gravity mount for the Garmin on top here. Vertex spacers, whole headset. set. 